All right, here we are with this 4104. Uh, I'm going to try not to talk too fast here, but I'm just going to recap a few things on this. So when this end, I saw this bus last year, um, and it had several issues that we noted. Number one, it was down on compression. Number two, it was down at least one cylinder. I told the owner it needs, it needs a rebuild. He decided he didn't want to invest that kind of money in it. He was just going to unload it. So he listed it for sale and sold it to somebody, but he did let the owner know that was buying it, that it needs an engine rebuild. So he was honest about selling it. He did, it was running and driving. He did drive it here. Um, I, I thought it was just, it was only down one cylinder, but I thought that was going to be the only problem with it real quick, you know, simple in frame, no big deal. Well, once we got it here, we knew it had a loose flywheel. That was another noted problem. So the first thing I attacked was the flywheel because if the, if, the, if the crankshaft was, crankshaft was damaged from the flywheel, that was going to completely change the way we were going to have to do this rebuild. So I pulled the transmission, uh, the flywheel uh, and the crankshaft. I had to clean up the mating surfaces on it. The crankshaft was not damaged. I was able to reattach it. It didn't, didn't wobble. It was nice. So that was good. Next step was pull the head. So there was about... A few hours of labor involved in removing the transmission and then about two and a half hours in labor to remove the head. Once we removed the head, uh, we discovered, well, first of all, before I even removed the head, I discovered that the oil bath air filters on here, two of them were completely empty and this engine had been running for a long time with no air filtration. And that's called a dusted engine. These engines don't handle dirt like that, just coming straight in the intake. The blower is basically destroyed. The tolerances and the clearances in the blower just get grinded away by all that dirt. And then it doesn't produce as much air as it's supposed to. And then all that dirt goes into the engine itself. It goes into the cylinder liners. It's going, you know, into the oil. Uh, it just, the oil on this thing, when I looked at inside the head, it was just the thickest, nastiest, gooeyest, sludgiest stuff I'd ever seen. Normally the inside the head is completely just clean on these. It's, it's black oil cause it's a diesel, but usually everything is clean and there's no, you know, build up in the corners and stuff like that, you know? So, uh, it was just the, the dust had just ruined the engine and, and gone through the oil. And these things don't filter oil as well as what a modern filter does either. So from then I knew that was a big concern. It needs to get hot tanked. We're probably looking, and you know, it's going to need a, an out of frame and just a complete rebuild like that. If it is rebuildable, we're going to really have to pay attention to tolerances and clearances and things like that too. So it's going to, the bill was going to be three times more than what it would have been. And then I pulled the head and I saw nine cracks that were easily visible. I didn't even use dye penetrant or anything that was just with my eyeballs. I could easily spot nine different giant cracks in the cylinder head. So it needed a new cylinder head, which is going to be over a thousand dollars for a new head. Uh, is going to need a new blower, which is a thousand dollars. It was going to, you know, in all reality, the crankshaft's going to have to be turned, um, and you know that's going to be five hundred dollars. It needed a new starter. That's two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars. Um, just you know, the hot tanking and and the amount of labor from going from an in frame to an out of frame and as many parts as it was going to need, the bill was going to be easily, easily three times, I think, what it was going to be. Uh, and that, that might even be a shy number. You know, the air compressor is probably toast. The alternator on this, the generator wasn't working. Um, it might have been fixable. I don't know, but that's probably going to have to be replaced. So he was looking a lot, lot more money than what we thought. We said, let's just put a hold on things. Uh, and we were able to find him a running takeout motor out of another 4104. You can't just put any, well, you can put any 671 in here, but it might take a lot of labor to do it. But if you can find a running, a cradle out of a 4104 with a matched transmission and it's got the right bell housing and everything, it'll just hook right in and go. That's the way to go. If you find one like on my bus, a 3751, it doesn't fit directly in here. It's a totally different mounting system. The bell housing's different. The transmission's a little bit different. Um, the case is different. The internal components of the transmission are the same. Uh, this is a left-hand rotation engine. A lot of trucks have right-hand rotation engines, so you can swap it to a left hand. You can change the direction of the engine, but it takes a lot of labor to do that. Uh, he found an engine complete with a transmission for $2,000 that's out of a 4104. I saw it run. It runs, and the guy actually drove it around his lot. Uh, so it was running driving. It's been sitting for a few years, but he did just fire it up for us, so it is currently running. Uh, it may be down a cylinder. That happens a lot when they sit, uh, the exhaust valves on one cylinder are open and the condensation, and moisture and humidity from the air uh, get up in there on those open valves and put a little bit of rust on the valve seat and on the valves. But usually after running, it comes in. But even if not, if it is down a cylinder, uh, to, to replace one cylinder kit is, is going to be nothing compared to what the bill would have been on this. So these things, uh, about two hours, I'll have this engine out of here when I go to do it. There's two bolts here on this, this big post that comes up, that bolt right there, and that big bolt over there. Once you take those two out, it just pivots down on two hooks on the back. And once you take the two bolts out of the hooks on the back, so it's those the two the four attachment points, the two hooks on the bottom, and then these two right here, this will come right out as one big power plant. 
Uh, and because he went ahead and got another transmission, I don't even have to take the labor to put this transmission back on. I'm just going to use that transmission. And this one, this transmission might have been questionable because it had that broken, uh, it had a drive shaft brake on it and the brake drum was broken and missing large chunks of metal. It was very out of balance and it had been banging around on there. Uh, and so the output shaft was probably going to be need to be torn in and looked at on this. Plus the input shaft had the loose flywheel to deal with. Uh, so all that stuff is just, we don't have to worry about it now. We got a new one. We're swinging in 2000 bucks, super deal. He also got for a hundred bucks. He got a new radiator, which is this, the deal of the century. Uh, cause this one was JB welded together. I was very concerned about it coming apart. Uh, you don't want to lose your coolant on it. So if he got a new radiator for it or a new used radiator for a hundred dollars, uh, that's well worth it. So he's $2,100 into parts just to get a new one to swing in way less on the labor for me to just about do anything on this. Uh, so that's really the way to go. We're going to end up saving him a lot of money. He knew it was going to need an engine rebuild when he bought it. So he was expecting these kinds of repairs, but this just ended up being way more expensive to get this thing going. Uh, it was just a, a much easier route was to get something else and start over. So again, the price was right. Uh, that's going to be nice to have it in here, uh, saving my customer money. Obviously my bill is going to be a lot less. I'm not going to make as much money, but that's typically, that's how my life goes, right? It's, <laughs> I would rather have them be happy on it. Uh, and, and if we get that other engine in here and he's got a running driving bus next week, that is going to be the way to go. Uh, and it, that engine, honestly, if it was driving around, will probably last. Well, you know, you saw how tough it is. This thing drove in with nine cracks in the cylinder head. Uh, they're, they're pretty tough. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I think he's going to be a lot happier with that decision and uh, he'll be here in just a little bit with a new, uh, engine, uh, and transmission cradle for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and unlock it. And then go ahead and start to tip it. That's good right there, I think. Okay, now I'm gonna hook some chains on it here and we'll drag it out to the end. I'll try to get a couple pieces of wood under so my forks will fit under there nice. And then we'll try and get it with the forklift.
It's on air. There's a piece of wood behind you. It's, it's not tall, but... It's stuck. You can get that like that. on this side but not on that. Uh, 
The new engine is here. Uh, we've got it tarped up. Uh, the intake is closed on it. Even if the tarp leaps, leaks, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to go through it and do a few things to it. There's a few little components here and there that I'm going to swap out from the other engine to this one. Uh, I'm going to take uh, a couple pieces, uh, a couple things on the um, thermostat housing are messed up on it. Um, it was already broke when it got here, the one... Um, it's the control for the shutters on the radiator for the radiator was broken when it got here. I knocked it off all the way once we took it off, but it was already broken when it got here. Uh, the tractor lifted it fine. I was worried about the tractor lifting it from up high and coming up higher. I didn't know if it was going to do it. The tractor has like a 3,000 pound capacity. This engine weighs 1,500 plus the transmission plus the cradle. So we're still, you know, we're probably about 2,500 pounds on the 3,000 pound weight lifting of the tractor and that that weight lifting is the full range the full height so just lifting it lower to the ground it's a lot less stress on there and i only have to lift it up uh, like a foot off the ground to hook that back into that cradle on there so uh, the, the tractor seemed to do completely fine with that so that that should be good uh so hopefully this week i'll be able to have the this engine out of here and then this engine back on and then running and driving around on the bus so that's the plan, and we saved the owner hopefully a whole bunch of money. Is the he'll have a running driving bus and a lot less money than what he thought. That's the that's the end goal. There's our replacement radiator. Hmm. Looks a little bit. Looks like that's been redone. That's not exactly a 4104 radiator, um, but. I think it'll work. That doesn't. That's a one-piece radiator. Those. Those are the end caps are are soldered on on this, as opposed to the 4104 that's normally on there is a bolt-on radiator. Uh, the top caps bolt on and off. So this has been replaced at some time, but it looks like it's the correct dimensions just offhand here. So, uh, and it looks pretty clean. Everything looks. You know, I, mean, I can see through there, and the fins all look in good shape. Got a little something down here. I don't know if that's a repair a leak or if that's just gook. Um, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Uh, that pipe got bent and kinked over, but we've got all the parts we need here. So this should go real well. Should be an exciting week. Look forward to some cool videos of getting that thing tuned up and running good. And then, uh, it's going to be easier to get it in the bus to do that. Cause again, it just takes an hour to probably hang it in there. Um, I don't have to hook everything up to get it running in there, but it'll be more stable. And this one's got to come out no matter what. So. That'll be the plan, and then I don't have to hook up an auxiliary fuel system or anything like that.